we come to the moment of inertia question and we want to calculate the moment of inertia of a disk with the cavity in it and then we'll do the sphere right how will this work well let's calculate the moment of inertia of the system about the center of the disk here then we can do any shifting that we want to do right so what you're going to do is you're also going to consider this as the moment of inertia of a solid disk minus the moment of inertia of the cavity about that place. You're going to do subtraction, right? So if this was 10 kilograms, what was this equal to? Okay, if you look at that problem, you will remember that this was heavier and it was equal to what? Equal to 10.666 with a repeating six kilograms. And then this one was equal to 0.666 repeating six kilograms, right? So, what would be the moment of inertia of this solid disk about its center? So, that moment of inertia, half m r squared. So, remember from physics one that the moment of inertia of a solid disk is half m r squared, right? So, we do one half times its mass, repeating sixes, times its radius, which is four meters squared. So, that's going to be 0 0.5 times 10.5. 666666, six, 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 repeating 6, times 16. So the moment of inertia of this is 85 point repeating 3s kilogram meter squared, right? Now what's the moment of inertia of the cavity? Well, the cavity is how far away from the center here, right? Well, it's 2 meters away, right? So for the cavity, I have to use the parallel axis theorem. Its moment of inertia is what? I is equal to half little m r squared plus m b squared. Its moment of inertia is half because it's like a disk, right? So we have to do half. What was its mass? 0.666, repeating sixes, times its radius, one squared, plus its mass, times its distance from the center, which is two meters, right? Square. <coughs> so you have, we could even approach this this way. We say half, this one is two thirds, plus two thirds times four. Because two squared is four, right? This and this cancels, you have one third plus eight thirds, right? And then you're going to have nine thirds, which is three. So it's three kilogram meter squared. Well, so what's the total moment of inertia of the disc with the hole? I total equals 85.333 minus three. You subtract the moment of inertia of the hole as if it was a mass, but it's a missing mass, right? And you end up having 82.333 kilogram meter square. That's the moment of inertia of this whole thing about the center of the disc. Now, what would its moment of inertia be around its center of mass? Remember, where was its center of mass? Well, we can now apply the parallel axis theorem to the center of mass of the disk, the center of mass moment of inertia should be even less than 82, right? So I can say I total about any axis is equal to I total about the center of mass plus MD squared. I total any axis, we found for the center 82.3333. I total about the center of mass. I have to, that's what I'm solving for. What's the mass of the object? That's 10 kilograms, right? What was the center of mass here? What's the shift amount? Well, when you look at that previous problem, you will see that the center of mass was 0.13333 repeating threes, meters, and it was to the left of there, right? So. That will be the distance of the shift, 0 0.13333 3, 3, 3, 3 squared. So let's calculate this now. 
52.15, and then 55, repeating fives. That's the moment of inertia of this shape about its center of mass, 82.155555. Now, if I want to calculate the moment of inertia of this shape about any point, if I want to find it about the center here, if I want to find it about this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, all I do is shift from the center of mass to any point that I want. Let's say I want to find it around the center of the cavity. Let's say this is a shape rotating about the center of the cavity that it has. And then through the cavity, there's a pole, right? So this is rotating around that pole. So that's basically what you would be doing. The mass of the whole thing is 10 kilogram times, what's the shift? Well, from the center of the cavity to the center of the disc is two. Two plus 0 0.1333, 2.13333 squared. So 82.1, okay? So that's pretty a good problem. So basically you do the, the whole solid disc, subtract the cavity, find the moment of inertia about the center, shift to the center of mass, then from the center of mass go anywhere that you want. How would things change if this was the sphere again, right? Uh, M1 over 10, and then the, the volume of that was four cubed over, four cubed minus one cubed, 64 over 63. So the mass of this was 640 over 63. The mass of this one was one cube over four cube minus one cube, one over 63. So the mass of that was 10 over 63. Where was its center of mass? When we did that problem, we found that the center of mass was uh, 0 0.031746 meters to the left. And again, this is a sphere now. Imagine it's a sphere and the cavity is a spherical cavity, right? So um, how do we find this moment of inertia? Well, we have to take the moment of inertia of a solid sphere, subtract from it the moment of inertia of a solid sphere, okay, which is the cavity, right? So I total would be, the, what's the moment of inertia of a solid sphere? Two-fifths mr squared, right? Two-fifths mr squared. Two-fifths times 640 over 63 times two uh, times four squared. <coughs> squared. What's gonna be the moment of inertia of the solid sphere, solid spherical cavity? Okay, well, we have to use the parallel axis theorem. Two fifths m r squared plus m d squared. Its mass is 10 over 63. Its radius is one, okay, plus its mass is 10 over 63 again. The distance of the shift is two meters, right? Because the cavity is two meters from the center. So I am first finding the moment of inertia about the center of the sphere. So uh, 0.4 times, so notice that's pretty small. <coughs> you subtract this from that you get the moment of inertia total about the center and that gives you 64.31746 right so this gives you the moment of inertia of the object about its center with the hole you take you took out the hole's moment of inertia then you shift that to the center of mass right So you say 64.31746 equals moment of inertia about the center of mass plus MD squared, and then the mass you put 10 kilogram, and the distance of the shift is the center of mass. 0 0.031746 squared. So the moment of inertia about the center of mass. Six. Now we know the moment of inertia of the sphere with the cavity around its center of mass, 64.307. Now I can do anything that I want. I can again shift to the center of the cavity, right? 
for um, uh, sphere, when we say I'm shifting to the center of the cavity, I'm thinking of an axis going through the center, and then this is rotating about that. It's not actually rotating about the center point. It's rotating about an axis going through its center, either cutting it this way, or cutting it or coming out of the board, and the sphere has only basically one kind of symmetry. You can either rotate this way or this way, but the moment of inertia is the same. Okay, so now we do I about the center of the cavity, 64.3074 plus 10 times the shift amount is what? 2.031746 squared. Okay, so you add on top of that 587. Okay, so the moment of inertia of the object with the hole around the center of the cavity is 105.587. So now you know how to handle the holes, how to find their center of mass, how to shift, how to find their moment of inertia, and all of those kinds of things. I hope this helps you. Thank you very much.